Hello, everybody. This is Mr. Lawback. In this lecture, we are going to go over the U.S. home front during World War I. Now, World War I lasted from 1914 to 1918, although the United States was really only officially involved in the last year, but it had quite an impact on the American home front. For Americans, the war was a conflict fought far away, quote, over there, end quote. The song Over There was a propaganda song to inspire people to support the U.S. efforts in World War I. Over there, of course, meaning Europe. It was also used as propaganda during World War II. Here's a clip of the song. The government looked for ways to give Americans a sense of personal involvement in the war. Ordinary citizens could help finance the war by buying liberty bonds. Celebrities like movie star Charlie Chaplin demonstrated their patriotism by promoting the purchase of these liberty bonds. In a big expansion of regulatory power, the federal government took over much of the economy, like never seen before. The Lever Food and Fuel Control Act passed in August of 1917 gave the government the power to regulate the production and consumption of food. Herbert Hoover, who of course would later become president, became famous for feeding European refugees. He headed the Food Administration. Here he worked to increase food production and he encouraged Americans to conserve food with voluntary Wheatless Mondays and Meatless Tuesdays. Daylight Savings Time was an innovation designed to give farmers more time to bring in their crops. A fuel administration was charged with conserving fuel supplies. It encouraged Americans to help this through fuelless Mondays and gasless Sundays. The War Industries Board, WIB for short, was given the power to support war production by allocating industrial resources. Under the leadership of Wall Street tycoon Bernard Baruch, the WIB was beginning to harness the industrial might of the nation by the end of the war. The government also controlled the railroads, allowing it to set priorities in transportation. This unprecedented control of the economy has led some historians to see World War I as the high watermark of progressivism. The wartime emergency allowed the government to exercise powers that would have been unthinkable a few years before. Remember, this was in the midst of laissez-faire governing. Thanks to the skill of administrators like Baruch and Hoover, much of this was accomplished with the cooperation of business and farm leaders. The mobilization of the economy during World War I would become a model for the later New Deal to deal with the Great Depression and government agencies during World War II. The government also attempted to regulate thought. Nothing did more to eventually discredit the extension of the government power than efforts to regulate what people could think and express publicly. In 1917, the government established the Committee on Public Information, or the CPI. Headed by journalist George Creel, the CPI was tasked with providing information about the war to the American people. Explanations soon became propaganda. In lectures, books, posters, and films, the Germans were depicted as barbarians. Creel encouraged newspapers to censor stories that did not follow the government's line on the war. Liberty Leagues were organized across the United States. Their members were tasked with spying on their neighbors and reporting any suspicious activity or disloyal talk to authorities. You can imagine how this led to paranoia. The war led to a heightened distrust of immigrants and hyphenated Americans, especially German Americans. The National Security League persuaded Congress to impose a literacy test on immigrants. In various communities, anti-German hysteria led to the banning of German music and food and the teaching of German language in high schools. Individual German Americans were often subject to harassment or worse, and there are even examples of people that were killed. In a notorious incident that took place in April of 1918, a German American man was mobbed and lynched in St. Louis. The victim had just enlisted in the U.S. Navy. The federal government added legal muscle to the suppression of dissent. 
1917 Espionage Act outlawed interfering with the draft and gave postal authorities the power to seize any publications sent through the mail that they considered treasonous. The 1918 Sedition Act went further and outlawed criticism of the government, the Constitution, or the armed forces. Thousands of Americans were charged with violating these laws, and over 1,000 were convicted. The socialist leader, Eugene Debs, was sent to prison for speaking out against the war. Robert Goldstein, a movie producer, was sentenced to three years in prison for making a movie about the American Revolution in which the British were portrayed as villains. It was deemed seditious because the British were currently our allies. Shank versus the United States was a landmark U.S. Supreme Court ruling in 1919 that ruled that freedom of speech protection afforded in the Constitution's First Amendment could be restricted by Congress if the words spoken or printed represented to society a clear and present danger in a time of war. There was also important social change during World War I. The war opened up economic possibilities for African Americans. With millions of men entering the military and wartime demand at capacity, northern industries needed workers. African Americans living in the South moved north in what was known as the Great Migration. Now this happened before the war and continued after the war, but during the war, 600,000 African Americans made their journey north from the South. Now many were met with discrimination and racism in northern cities, and there were race riots, one of the most notable ones being in Chicago. The war also made it possible for women to step into jobs that had not been open to them before the war. Although most would leave these positions once the soldiers began returning home, their efforts during the war would help make the case for women's suffrage, which would be passed in the form of the 19th Amendment and endorsed by Woodrow Wilson in 1920. A big takeaway here was that World War I saw an unprecedented level of government control over the economy and behavior and in any other context, would have probably been seen as very unconstitutional. So I hope this information helps you better understand some of the challenges and the changes on the home front in the United States during World War I. Have a great rest of the day, and thanks for watching and listening.